Здрасти! Как си днес? In this video, we're talking all about Bulgarian and more specifically my experience learning the language before going there for a few days. Now, before we dive in, if you're curious about this language, you should know that I have a free Bulgarian starter page waiting for you in my little language library. You can sign up for this and loads of other free good stuff at the link in the description below. I've studied a lot of languages in the past to varying levels, but I've never really gone deep with a Slavic language before. And so I figured Bulgarian was a good place to start and going there for a few days was a great excuse. So I want to share this whole experience with you and look into a little bit about how much it costs and how long it takes to learn a language and all of that stuff. So before we left, there were a few key things that I did to help learn Bulgarian for that time. I had about six weeks. I started actually um, in the airport in China really, or maybe even in Korea before I came back fully from Korea. And I was just learning some few basic words on memorized. In the airport, I remember I downloaded loads of Bulgarian Pod 101 and I was listening to those while I was waiting for planes and all of this stuff. When I got home, finally, I was able to really start proper, if you know what I mean. And so starting proper meant going to the library and there was a Teach Yourself Bulgarian kit that I let out that had um, a book and some CDs. And I went through the whole of that book in the six, in the, well, by this point, like, yeah, maybe about six weeks, in the six weeks that I had before we visited. And as well as that, I had a lot of lessons. So I booked 20 hours, I think it was. Yeah, 20 hours on italki. I sort of sacrificed a bit of my working time. So I had half an hour in the morning just before I started work. And then I cut short work in the evenings, in the afternoon rather, because it's never that productive by the end of the day anyway. So, and then I had a half an hour lesson there most days. So I kind of sandwiched my working day with Bulgarian lessons. And this worked really, really well because when I had that constant daily exposure with a few different teachers as well. So I was getting different practice of like going over, you know, especially towards the end where I had to book in with a few new teachers. I was then going over everything that I'd learned about like introducing myself with these new people. And that was really, really great. On top of this, I was using things like Memrise, BulgarianPod101.com, just to help kind of increase my exposure. Oh, and SBS Bulgarian and lots and lots of free audio from Live Lingua that I downloaded. And I would listen to this while I was working, which was very boring and repetitive at a certain point. And when it got boring, I stopped. Then I found Bulgarian music. So I was then like constantly just changing up the passive stuff so that it didn't get boring, so that it was still fun. So that's pretty much everything that I did before. By the time we left, I was very happy with my level, all things considered, you know, just a few weeks with a, a language in a family that I had this kind of mishmash of, of history with. Um, and I was, I was pretty chuffed. We set off, we arrived in Bulgaria and I was able to do all of the things that I had wanted to in a much more thorough way than just point and thank you, you know? So I remember the very first night we arrived, we arrived quite late, found the accommodation and went back. On the, on the way there, we'd seen a subway. So we thought, well, that'll do. It was like Sunday night, I think. And there was nothing open. We went to this subway and, uh, and I ordered everything in Bulgarian. And the woman behind the counter was like, uh, and giving me a thumbs up and winking like, yeah, you got it, yeah, good, good job. And that was wonderful. That was just day day one, you know, and I was doing that already, so that felt really good. And then all the way through, things like um, navigating us on the metro, which, you know, is, is relatively easy because obviously there's like translations into like an English script underneath the Cyrillic script. But still, I was trying to focus on reading the Cyrillic script and reading adverts just everywhere around when you're on the metro and stuff. You see all the adverts, you know, just trying to translate all that stuff. Now, I remember there was a poster for like a burger. It was called like the Arizona burger or something like that. And I remember just like, oh yeah, Arizona. So words that I'd never learnt explicitly, but had then been able to understand, like stuff like that's always really nice. And getting us tickets, we went to Plovdiv for the day. So um, that was great because it was actually the European um, capital of culture in 2019. So that was like an unexpected little bonus that there was all this like extra things happening. And I think a lot of money had maybe been invested into making things like the amphitheater, um, you know, look really amazing. And they had a, an amphitheater and is it called a stadium more in the, in the city? Um, and there was a mosque. 
I'd never been in a mosque because every, every time I'd been to places where there was a mosque, where there'd been a mosque, um, like Brunei, for example, I was traveling on my own and as a female, you, you weren't allowed in. So, um, so yeah, I'd never been in a mosque before. So that was pretty cool as well. But yeah, just getting the, getting the tickets for that and being able to like then understand people on the bus, like, oh, okay, they say mercy a lot more than blah, 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 blah. You know, like the longer form of, of thank you. Stuff like that really just helped to like enhance the whole experience, buying little things in the shops, you know. Um, so yeah, I was really, really pleased with how it went during the trip. And now here we are after, and I still want to keep learning Bulgarian. I still feel like, you know what, I actually liked this language. I felt that in the past, when I had learned bits of Slavic languages, like Polish, for example, never got beyond chapter three of the book. I, I don't know why, it just, it hadn't grabbed me in that same way. Um, Czech, Slovak, again, same kind of thing. Whereas the Bulgarian, I do feel this kind of more of a connection somehow. Maybe it's just because I would put this emphasis on, we're going there, I'm gonna learn, and I've made it into this thing, you know? But yeah, I do feel that it's something that I wanna keep up. So I will be like, just integrating it into my regular language learning routine as we head into the new year. And uh, yeah, that's it really. Just wanted to fill you in on how it all went. Um, in terms of how long it takes to learn a language and how much does it cost? That was, they were two of the big questions that I wanted to use Bulgarian as a way to, as an attempt, I should say, to answer those questions. The reason for that is that I think typically we think that a language takes years to learn and probably costs lots and lots of money. And learning Bulgarian then, I didn't have much time. So for me, that instantly meant that the money I was gonna put in, in that shorter amount of time would be higher than I would statistically speaking, if you like, with other languages for that length of time. So, and that was the case. And that did prove that, you know, it either costs a bit more and takes less time, or if I'd taken longer to learn Bulgarian, had the same amount of lessons, but spread out, that it would have been longer and cost less. Do you see where I'm going with this? So I think that question, or those two questions, I should say, are quite hard to answer. There's no hard and fast answer. French has been a part of my life for over 20 years, and there's still things that I don't know, right? You know, Bulgarian's been a part of my life for a few months, and I feel like you know, I'm nowhere near what I'm like in French, in Bulgarian, but I feel like, you know, I can definitely do all the things that I wanted to do and maybe understand a little bit more than I was expecting as well. So it's a really difficult, they are, I keep saying it, there's two questions. They're really difficult questions to answer. And I think it really depends on a lot of variables. I've actually gone into a lot of detail on this with every language I've ever studied and I've made graphs and all that good stuff. So check out that blog post if you wanna delve into this, these questions a little bit more. I'll put the link in the description below so you can have a read of that. And I think that is it. Like I said at the beginning, if you want to learn Bulgarian or there's like 20 plus languages there now with starter pages, then be sure to join my little language library. It's completely free and you can sign up right now at the link in the description below. But what do you think? How long do you think it takes to learn a language and how much do you think it has to cost? Have you ever studied a language in the way that I did with Bulgarian in this short time? Time, this kind of injection of language. I'd love to hear about your experiences, so do share them in the comments below. And as always, remember to subscribe for regular language learning videos. I will see you very soon. Thank you. Bye.